come out today. Um, those, I think, info packets we have in the back. Um, we still have some potential guys out there, so we'll send them a release later with all the information. Um, Coach is going to take some questions, and then, uh, or sorry, don't be Mark, so take questions. Uh, yeah, I think the big thing is obviously with signing day is uh, you know, I feel like our football family got a great deal stronger today uh, through through our hard work and recruiting. You know, philosophies help change programs, as do systems, but what really moves the needle are people, and uh, we can't stress the importance of getting the right people in here um, to help us put this foundation together for us to have the success we want to have. I couldn't be more thrilled with the type of kids that we've recruited with a premium on being smart, tough, and reliable. Um, those are the three characteristics that our staff uh, wanted to evaluate these guys with. Um, our staff, their wives and families did a tremendous job for us recruiting. Uh, this is uh, you know, all hands on deck when it comes to recruiting our players, which serve as our best advocates, uh, our administration, everybody played a hand in helping us uh, put this class together. And, and, and I can't thank all the people, the professors that helped uh, spend time with these recruits on campus uh, for the job they did. You know, it's truly a national class, and anyone that knows me knows that if we're going to recruit here at the University of Maryland, it'll start right here in the DMV, and it, it won't, that won't change. But what we've shown is that we have the ability to recruit nationally uh, and go wherever we need to go to get players to help us make this pro program great. Um, we've got four guys right here from the DMV that have signed already. I think we've got seven guys from down in Florida, a couple from Texas, some from New Jersey, and then 11 different states kind of make up this class. And to me, it shows the power of what the University of Maryland is about. Um, we've got some highly talented skill position guys, but if you look at this class as a whole, the, the premium for us was getting better in the trenches on the O-line and D-line. And we obviously still have a few some scholarships left and we're gonna continue uh, to try to build the both offensive line and the defensive line but we feel really good about the kids that we've, uh, we've been able to bring in. And that's, that was a huge, huge need for us, especially with depth. Um, I'm excited about competition. You know, this program is gonna be all about competition and the way you get better is when you create competition at every position. Um, and again, we've been able to add some really good players to a foundation of good players we have coming back. Uh, and with that, that's where my excitement starts. And uh, again, uh, this is the type of class that we expect to be able to recruit here to Maryland year in and year out. Um, and, and hopefully, again, we're able to show you know, our fans and all the people that love the church that we're moving in the right direction. With that, I'll open it up to some questions. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. The Jacklers Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. All right, thank you. <laughs> right, Dave. Coach, seven players from Florida, you know, what do you attribute the success to getting seven talented kids out of the Sunshine State? Well, I think the big thing is, you know, obviously we go where we have familiarity. And, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the SEC. I've recruited Florida uh, for about as long as I've recruited the DMV. Uh, we've got coaches on our staff, you know, Brian Williams, who hails from the Miami area, uh, Mike Miller from the Palm uh, Palm Beach area. So we've got guys that have some familiar ties down there. And again, uh, I thought our staff as a, as a group did a tremendous job of, you know, whether it was co-recruiting with the position coach and a recruiting coach of uh, trying to meet the needs. But, you know, if you look at this, the group of guys we started, I think we've got like 13 state champions in this group. And to me, uh, when guys have the ability and love to win, I think it becomes contagious. And that's kind of what we, we went after guys that had the ability to be smart, tough, and reliable, but also had some winning pedigree. Um, Rock and Jared was obviously a big one for you guys today. How, how did that process look on, on your end, and what was the staff's reaction uh, when, when he made that decision? You know, uh, 
Rakim had, has made the recruiting process very unique. Um, he's a guy that throughout the – I've known him since eighth grade, and he's kind of been really consistent with who he is as a person. But one of the unique things about him, and unless you know his story, you wouldn't understand. But he was a kid that in the eighth grade had a chance to go to some perennial – really powerful high schools here in the area, and he chose to go to St. John's before they became the St. John's that they are now. And so what that showed me was that here's a guy that believes in himself, that has some natural leadership abilities, uh, the type of guys that we want to build our program with. And so uh, his process was all over the place from, from our standpoint because you, don't, you didn't have information. Um, I mean, even the way he signed and committed today. We had no idea he was signing today. We had no idea that uh, he was even coming to us and then all of a sudden, you know, he puts out a, a, a tweet that says committed. And we're like, what is this? And so uh, really unique, but nothing, nothing happens by accident. And I think our staff as a whole collectively did a really good job of being consistent with him, giving him enough space, showing him the things that Maryland could do for his program. He's a kid that grew up uh, watching and rooting for Stefan Diggs and I think that, you know, the effect of seeing what Stefan was able to do here played heavily in it. But again, he's another one of these local guys. And the challenge is that uh, we've got really good players in this area. We've got three of the top high schools in the country located right here. And if a guy like Rock Kim Jarrett thinks Maryland is good enough to help him develop him on and off the field, the challenge is for other guys to believe the same. And I think it uh, shows the type of character that Rock Kim has. Um, Coach, have you had a chance to talk to Rockham and has he expressed to you what it was maybe that put Maryland uh, above the rest of the schools he was considering? Well, we've talked to Rockham quite a bit um, over the last year, but I think the big thing for him is he's a kid that loves challenges. You know, he, he really enjoys uh, doing things and building. I mean, again, you use the example of him going to St. John's over some other local schools that have had great success. It kind of talks a lot about the character, and I think it's the epitome of what this area represents, kind of a you know, hard-working, blue-collar um, area that you know, he's not a follower by any means. And so um, you win with guys like him. Just to, to, touching on the effect of signing a five-star, um, does that resonate more when you talk about it being a national program? When you do sign a five star, this is the Maryland's first five star since Davian Prince. Does that resonate more more in recruiting circles than any anything else? I know you said that getting the offense, and defensive line is important for this team, but as far as the program and the future, how important is it signing a five star player? You know, the stars for us don't matter, but I think it goes along the line that peer pressure still runs recruiting, and when Players that respect Rakim Jarrett as a football player see him sign and come to a place like Maryland. I think it opens up eyes and doors that uh, that Maryland could possibly be the type of program that has the ability to develop you. Um, I mean, we've had back-to-back -back first round draft picks here, um, you know, from Darnell Savage a year ago to two years ago, DJ Moore. And so there's no doubt in my mind that um, when you sign a guy like Rakim Jarrett, um, very similar to when we signed Stefan Diggs, very similar to when we signed Vernon Davis uh, back in the day. It opens up some eyes that we hope to, to maybe benefit from because if a guy like him thinks our program is good enough, the people that respect who he is as a player, it maybe opens up some of their eyes as well. talking to a guy like Jared that you know is committed to you know LSU that's you know competing in a national championship and um, you know didn't have Maryland in his top ten initially. What is your kind of pitch to him and how do you um, like what was your approach in trying to get him on board with Maryland? Well I think it starts with people. Um, you know this is still a people driven uh, business and when you go out and recruit you sell who you are. Um, I, I think when you look at the investment that's been made in facilities around here, uh, when you, you look at the type of coaching staff that we've brought uh, here to Maryland, these all play a major, major factor. When you talk about building resumes both on and off the field, um, because of our location, uh, being in one of the best cities in the world, one of the most powerful cities in the world, these are all things that we sell 
And uh, fortunately for us, we recruited smart, tough, and reliable players that understand um, what, what it's all about. We've got a great academic institution that really supports our players. And I mean, what is it not to like about Maryland? Um, you, you mentioned the O-line, D-line um, abundance of guys. How, how good do you feel about the opportunities for them to immediately help that position group, especially with the experience you have um, with the JUCO guys? Well, I think the big thing is obviously when you sign high school guys, especially on the O-line, um, it takes a little more time there, and that's why you see us with a few more junior college prospects on both sides of the line. Um, and, and when you look at the junior college O-linemen, these are guys that obviously we're bringing in to have the opportunity to compete. Um, one of the things that opens up doors is when you have opportunities. And obviously, uh, the thing we, we're going to always do here is try to create the competition to where we're going to recruit the best players we can possibly bring in. And every year, guys have to compete at a high level to maintain their role with the team. So um, bringing in the junior college players on both sides maybe expedites. Uh, the development uh, stage a little quicker because they've got a couple of years experience. But I think the biggest factor for us will be the fact that I think eight of the signees will be mid-year enrollees, whether they're high school or junior college. And to me, that's the part that uh, you know, I'm really excited about because these guys will be here for spring practice, for our winter workouts, and all the culture building things that we need. And that, that more than anything helps the, in the development of players. Honestly, getting Jared is big, but, but what needs to happen to get more high-level of workers than to think Maryland is the destination? I mean, the, the recruiting cycle, and from the day I got here, the 2021 class is kind of the one that we've had to, you know, we've really put a lot of emphasis on because that gives us two years of a recruiting cycle to where these kids know who we are, um, the stability of the program with, you know, the same head coach, the same assistant coaches for the most part. Um, that, that's what kids are looking for, you know. The last few years, we've had three head coaches in five years, and we all have different recruiting philosophies, different structures, and different, you know, uh, systems that we, we operate. And so now the big thing is, is the stability is here now, and we've got two years of recruiting guys, and those relationships are the thing that gets you the players more than wins and losses, in my opinion. Now, obviously, wins and losses, wins help, but the relationship is the big piece. What stood out with the guys at Independence U and Hutchinson? And have you ever seen them on the Netflix show, uh, Last Chance U? I have not watched Last Chance U, uh, at least this year I haven't. Um, you know, the thing that stood out are the characteristics we look for, you know, in terms of height, speed, size, and then the characteristics we look for by position when we evaluate them. And, you know, obviously these, all the guys from Independence, all the guys from Hutchinson, uh, checked all the boxes for us. Um, they're older players, you know, a couple of the guys there have, have gone off on more mission, and so they come back and they're a little older player, which gives us a little more maturity at the position. Um, you know, obviously up front on the O-line and D-line, the help that they bring, the fact that they're a few years uh, older than a high school player, usually that maturity helps you, especially up front. Right, Patrick. Two, two parts to this, Mike. One, just who are those eight? Early enrollees, and then also. You're going to test me on that. Uh, it's, it's a I, trivia, trivia question. Okay. Well, the the other part here was you're talking about how you were building towards that 2021 class. Was there a different approach that you took to this group, uh, and kind of what was your uh, satisfaction with it in, in the, throughout the cycle and the patience required to kind of get to where you wanted to get? I mean, we don't take necessarily a different approach. I think when I talk about targeting the 2021 class, it's getting in on them early, getting them here to games, getting them on campus. Uh, the more often guys get on campus, the better chance you have to recruit them and to come here. Obviously, with this class, we've had one year. Um, the 2021 class will have two years of, of doing that, which really gives them a good idea of who we are as a program and, and what our values and principles are. So. Um, don't you don't change your philosophy. I mean, we have some really great, unique things about the University of Maryland that we sell. And so, um, to me, the more you can do it, the longer you can do it, the more the messaging remains consistent, the easier the, the close is for us. And as far as the eight, you know, in early enrollees, that's the one to take care of. Right? Uh, uh, 
in, in terms of, I think this is the first year in a while that a quarterback has not been signed. Is that an indication? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is, is that an indication that, I mean, obviously you're, you're still looking for that. Is it going to be through high school players or, or, or graduate transfers? A little bit of both. I mean, we're going to try to find the best players we can possibly find, whether it's quarterback, D-line, O-line. Uh, we still have some work to do in recruiting. Again, the, grant, the transfer portal, the grad transfers, uh, opportunities are there. Um, you know, we've got another month after this signing date to kind of, you know, go out and, and see what's out there. Um, but we're not going to be afraid to go recruit every position we possibly can to make us a better team overall. And just follow up, this, uh, obviously, signing a guy like Jared, is, is that uh, sort of a, a, a lure to get a, a, a good quarterback in here? Well, one thing I learned in this business is good players like to play with good players. And so, you know, having guys like Rakim Jared and, you know, Day Day McDougal, uh, Nick DeGenero, who is one of my favorites of, of this class, you know, we signed three really good receivers that we feel will improve that room. Mike, earlier you said uh, smart, tough, and reliable were the main characteristics you're looking for in this class. And this is now the foundation of your your second recruiting class under your belt so far. Here. One and a half. One and a half. Yeah. Um, are those same characteristics, smart, tough, reliable, something that you are hoping uh, last year's true freshman and last year's retro freshman that are going to uh, bring to the roster when we're looking at you know, who's playing in 2020? Uh, those are paramount to play and be a contributor for us. Uh, smart players uh, do things the right way on the field. Tough players mentally and physically, you're always going to win with them, and then reliable. Um, if you look at the way we played this year, I, I would dare to say we weren't a team that consistently played smart, tough, and reliable. But to me, when we go out and recruit, uh, we put a premium on checking those three boxes with the guys we bring in, and then with our current team, uh, just continuing to reinforce it with the culture that we're creating and that we're developing uh, so that we can be more consistent playing smart, tough, and reliable. With a lot of the early commits in this class, um, like especially uh, Ruben Hippoloy, um, a lot of them were really, you know, on Twitter and social media, getting you know other kids excited about committing to Maryland and trying to you know kind of build a pipe and get more kids to commit. How helpful is that, you know, for you and your staff in, in the recruiting process? You know, it takes everybody um, and to, to finish the process. And as I said, uh, peer pressure still runs recruiting, and the more our commitments and the guys that really believe in the vision that we've set for the program sell it. I still believe our players are the best advocates we have and our players did a tremendous job in this recruiting cycle uh, when kids were on campus really doing a good job of uh, ensuring the players that what we say we do as coaches and as a program that we actually do it. And to me I think third party validation is critical and you know our players have done a tremendous job along again with our coaches, the wives, Everybody uh, selling the program, and, and it, it's really helped us. Coach, you mentioned this being a national class. You went to California to get Devin King. You went to Detroit to get Penny Boone. These are areas that Maryland just doesn't usually get players from. So is there anything different you have to do in an area where you're not accustomed to, to going for talent? No, I think the big thing is the relationship piece. Um, you know, when you look at our staff, we have guys that have recruited all of these areas. Uh, you know, Corey Robinson has been up in the Detroit metro area along with Scotty Montgomery. Uh, a bunch of us, Joker Phillips, Scotty Montgomery, Brian Williams have recruited that South Florida area. Uh, you know, Texas, John Reagan spent a great deal of his career in, in the state of Texas. So we have really strong, meaningful relationships in these areas, and we've been able to nurture them, keep them, and, and it's really helped us to maybe expand our net until, you know, if we can get to where we control the DMV, we probably don't have to go out as far, but we're a national brand. And if these local guys don't think our program's good enough, we'll go find them somewhere else. Um, I'm hoping again, they understand that you can come to Maryland and earn a strong degree and have opportunities to go on to play at the next level. We've had a ton of players that have done it. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, we can continue to maybe take some ownership here in the DMV and, and get some of these top players to believe in the vision that we've set. And I think we can really do, a, uh, we can really become the program we all want us to be. To your right, Dave. 
Coach, uh, yeah, a little bit more about Penny Boone, the kid out of Detroit, the four-star uh, running back, uh, recruiting in the heart, in the teeth of Big Ten country. Even though you guys have been in the league five years, you're still kind of the new kids in town. How huge is it to get a kid uh, going up against the other Big Ten schools recruiting-wise? Yeah, you know, with Penny, as I said, you know, he's the Detroit Metro Player of the Year, a big, strong, physical runner that has the ability to play in space. He catches the ball well. Uh, plays with a, a, a little chip on his shoulder, really physical uh, without the football. And so, you know, to be able to go into Detroit and get a guy like Penny Boone, I think will enable us to go back there um, in years to come because he's a guy like how Rock Kim Jarrett is here, how Day Day McDougal is in South Florida that other guys know about. And all of a sudden he's going to a place like Maryland and, and having great success. And that, that's how you open the door. So it's great to get a guy like Penny Boone signed up. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. We'll have a release out to you later today.